The profile surface texture standards were published towards the end of the 1990s. These standards, which are now more than 25 years old, had not been revised since, apart from a few minor amendments and corrections. However, over the past 25 years, instrumental techniques have evolved significantly, analysis is now essentially carried out on a PC, separate from the instrument, and the complexity of machine surfaces has increased, requiring new methods of analyzing profiles. It was therefore important to revise these standards. This is what was done at the end of 2021, with the publication of a new standard, ISO 21920. The new standard aims to revise all the standards related to profiles and to bring together definitions and parameters in a single document. The only exception concerns the standard on R&W motifs, resulting from the French standard, which is very specific and needed to remain as it is. The old standards were therefore cancelled, following the publication of ISO 21920. Even if the new standard includes most of the parameters defined in the previous standards, their definitions have been modernized, introducing more or less notable differences. It was therefore important to be able to differentiate the specifications falling under the new standard from those falling under the old standards. This is what was done in ISO 21920-1 with the definition of a symbol, slightly modified by the addition of a horizontal line above the triangle to symbolize a profile. A similar modification was introduced in the surface standard, ISO 25178-1, with a symbol representing a surface. Depending on the symbol used, we therefore know which standard to refer to for the interpretation of tolerances. We will see some practical examples, later. A first important modification concerns the process of preparing the primary profile from the measured profile. Previously. The first step consisted of leveling the profile or removing its nominal form in the case of a non-planar workpiece. Then, the micro-roughness filter was applied to limit the bandwidth in high frequencies where the specification does not apply. In the new standard, these two steps are now applied in reverse order. We start by restricting the bandwidth before applying the form removal operation. On most profiles, the difference will be quite small but it is possible that on profiles with a large shape or geometric structures, the differences will be more noticeable. Another important modification concerns the elimination of sampling lengths, which impose the calculation of most parameters piece by piece and the calculation of an average value. For the sake of simplification and to reflect progress in the stability of profilometers, there is now no more averaging and the parameters are defined and calculated directly on the evaluation length. The evaluation length is defined in the same way, by a multiple of the cutoff for the filtered profiles, or by the length of the primary profile. A third change, made to the decision rule, has an impact on the interpretation of the results. Previously, the default decision rule was the so-called 16% rule, ISO 4288 specified that, if one value out of six was out of tolerance, the part could nevertheless be accepted, possibly at the cost of additional measurements. This rule was seldom used and often misunderstood. The new standard now specifies that all measured values must be within tolerance. This is known as the max rule. So, by default, unless otherwise indicated, the interpretation of parameter results must be done with the max rule. To continue using the 16% rule, you must now explicitly write it on the drawing. As said previously, depending on the symbol used, the interpretation differs. And this can cause differences in the results calculated during verification. This is why a company planning to move to the new standard must, at least, check that the tolerances are still valid by comparing the parameters of the two standards on the same profiles. And if not, it will have to update its drawings with tolerances adapted to the new standard. We can see here an example of differing interpretations. In the case of RK parameters, the difference also apply on the default filter. In the ISO 4288 standard, there was a procedure for determining the cutoff suitable for the profile, 
and this resulted in a certain number of default settings to be used in the absence of explicit specification. The procedure varied, depending on whether we were dealing with a periodic profile or not. The main problem with this method was that the verification dictated default settings to the specification, which contradicts the basic rules of ISO GPS. A new rule is therefore proposed in ISO 21920-3, based on the tolerance value to define a setting class. Once the class is defined, a second table provides default values for evaluation length, main cutoff, micro roughness filter, etc. If the idea of revising this procedure was laudable in itself, the solution of using setting classes remains complex. The limits applied to the tolerance to determine the class are not clearly supported by scientific publications. And in the end, on mechanical parts, the majority of cases end up with a cutoff of 0.8 mm. It would have been much simpler to make it the default directly, in order to avoid such a complex procedure. It can be assumed that this chapter of the standard will be revised or simplified in the coming years. The GPS standards were initially designed for automotive and mechanical applications, and the default settings are suitable primarily for these applications. But for other cases, it is better not to use them without verification. On this subject, at Digital Surf, we believe that the different settings and in particular the cutoff should be chosen deliberately depending on the application, materials and or manufacturing processes. This is the condition for obtaining a good functional correlation between the calculated parameters and the monitored functions. Setting them by default hides their significance from the eyes of the metrologist and leads many users to use them without asking any questions. We saw earlier that the parameters were now defined over the evaluation length. There is, however, an exception with parameters related to peaks and pits, such as RP, RV, or RZ. As these parameters identify extreme points of the profile, they are very sensitive to outliers, and in order to reduce this influence, they are still calculated by average. The sampling length is replaced by the notion of section length, which is defined differently depending on whether we are on the primary profile or a filtered profile. The method of calculating these parameters has been clarified, particularly when a portion above the profile extends between two section lengths. A first pass identifies the portions on either side of the reference line. Then the extremum of each portion is quantified, and only then are counted by section length. In the end, the average is calculated. On waviness profiles, it can be common for certain extrema to be absent on certain section lengths. In this case, they are counted as zero, which has the effect of reducing the average. However, it must be kept in mind that these parameters, calculated on the primary or roughness profile, are very sensitive to noise and outliers, and are therefore not very robust in an uncontrolled environment. The RSM parameter has undergone several updates over time, in order to correct its instability and uncertainty in its definition, which made its implementation variable among different manufacturers. The new segmentation procedure, described in ISO 16610-45 and called crossing the line segmentation, aims to clarify and stabilize the determination of profile elements and therefore their quantification. This parameter should however be used preferably on profiles presenting periodicities, or in any case, should not be used on perfectly stochastic, i.e. random profiles. The volume parameters, which had been introduced in the surface standard, ISO 25178-2, were adapted to profiles, to quantify void volume or material volume of the different sections of the Abbott curve. They offer a more flexible alternative to RK parameters, which are limited to stratified surfaces. Motifs parameters, linked to watershed segmentation, first appeared in ISO 25178-2 for surfaces. They are now available for profiles and make it possible to quantify significant peaks and pits after wolf pruning. The density of peaks or pits evaluates their number per unit length. The curvature allows us to evaluate whether the peak or pit is narrow or wide, 
which implies different tribological behavior. The last three parameters are calculated only on significant peaks or pits, retained by pruning after segmentation. They are therefore more robust and representative of the behavior of the surface. In the field parameters, several parameters are also adapted from those that existed for surfaces, such as RAL, the autocorrelation length, or RSW which quantifies the dominant wavelength, for periodic profiles. Other parameters have been added, in particular to quantify the maximum, and not just the average, and also to check if the standard deviation is sufficiently small compared to the average value, which is a sign that this average value is meaningful. When we compare parameters from the two standards, calculated on the same profiles, we note discrepancies which are linked to differences in the definition of the parameters, and to changes in the process of preparing the primary profile. Some parameters are particularly sensitive, such as RSK or RKU. Others barely change like RA, RQ or RDQ. It is therefore recommended to check your data and recalculate the parameters with the new standard to see if it is necessary to adjust the tolerances on drawings. However, this should not prevent industry and research from adopting the new ISO 21920 standard for new projects. To summarize, parameters defined according to the new standard are indicated with a new root symbol. The order of the F operation and the S filter is inverted compared to before, which can create differences on some profiles. Field parameters are no longer averaged over sampling lengths. However, peak parameters are still calculated as an average over section lengths. The default decision rule is now the max rule. Some parameters are associated with default settings via setting classes. And new parameters complete the range of possibilities. The most important thing is to be informed of the different definitions and know how to adjust your metrological procedures. The old standards have provided good service for 25 years, but it is time to adopt a new standard designed for the challenges of the future and adapted to modern measuring instrument technologies. In all cases, Mountains Map software has offered, since version 8.1, both the new standard and the old ones, which makes it possible to have them coexist in the same document for example, to compare the sensitivity of certain parameters. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment and indicate your needs for future videos. Click on the like button below this video. And subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. You will find other resources in the Surface Metrology Guide. You can also visit www.digitalsurf.com to learn more about Mountain software. Thank you.